Welcome back, my pro bloggers. It's been a great year. Here's five memorable moments of 2023. 2023. You won't believe the number one. Stay tuned. So at number five, we have the injector pump saga. The original fuel injector pump was not working anymore, hadn't been working for a long time, so Jimmy found a good one on the internet. Unfortunately, you can't trust everything you find on the internet, and it turned out to be a steaming pile of you know what. So, but anyways, everything worked out. We had a lot of fun doing it, so check it out. We're gonna call all our favors in on this one. <laughs> it wants to run. It's like, I wanna get out there, guys. Oh. <laughs> like, oh, you wanna help? I charge $100 an hour for that. It's doing it right. That's not what the last guy did. Well, we didn't do this. There's man. really only one way to do a motor. That's the right way. Yeah. <laughs> this is where all the screaming sounds are coming from. He did it. Well, he did it. He run and the fucking the thingy, whatever that is, the uh, injector was 180 degrees off, man. We're getting back to the woods, guys. Woo! <laughs> I got the skitter done, kind of didn't get the skitter done. We got some stuff pulled. Got mud on the tires, but she just ain't running right. More downtime. This thing is killing us right now. Lisa's got mud on the tires again. We pulled some firewood out with it. It's all muddy, but it's something. Oh. What do you do? What do you do? LS swap it. At number four, we have the engine swap in the K20, my Chevy truck. The new to me 350. Near the end of last year, 2022, the 292 was just was not running straight. The straight six in the truck, it was not running good. It needed a carburetor, it needed intake. A lot of parts I couldn't find very readily locally. I'd have to get stuff off the internet, and the stuff I was getting off the internet was junk. I couldn't, I wasn't having any luck. So decided the easiest thing to do would be to throw a small block in it. So I searched the internet for a little while, found a small block 350 on the interweb, went out, grabbed it, put it in. The rest is history. I like the sounds it makes, uses a lot more gas than I ever thought was possible. But had a lot of fun doing it. Check it out. See if we can get it to start again. You don't want to run. One of those situations where, boy, I wish I had some help. <laughs> See, a damn thing won't stay started, man. Uh, it's normal. It wants to f***ing die, man. I'll oh, get it, get it. I don't know, I don't man. Know, man. I think yeah. Think an LS swap. What do you guys think? <laughs> Picked this old girl up and drove back with it. Okay. Up cover number two. We already know his gaskets are garbage. Hmm. Definitely no way to tell that whether or not it's been set up or not. Though. At number two, we got Bob Marley, the elevator. We call it Bob Marley because it's always jamming. But beside that, it is a force multiplier. We're not going back to load by hand. Can't believe it took us so long to get one. ourselves an 
elevator, sort of. And that, a firewood lift slash hay lift slash coal lift, whatever you want to lift with it. It's designed to be pretty uh, flexible as far as what you use. It's a little giant. Um, they didn't tell me how old it was. Judging by the patina, I'm going to say 70s, maybe 80s. It's had a couple repairs already. See the gear there has had a nice little brace put on it. Two of them. So I'm not saying it's perfect, but it beats the heck out of the elevator we have right now, which is no elevator. But you might see something missing right there. There's no motor on it. Need to figure out some way to power this sucker. That's pretty much where we're going to be at with it this weekend. I need to dig up some kind of motor for it. Gas motor, of course. And get this thing going. Probably have to buy five gallons of grease and a bucket and a paintbrush. <laughs> I don't get your ball. At number two, we got the softwoods lost in the pines. We never caught softwoods before. We've seen a lot of it, but around here, it's not really a, a big seller, except for this summer. It was doing really well, so we caught a couple loads of that, and we learned some valuable lessons about dealing with sapwood. That is, mainly, it's extremely sticky, and you want to not cut trees down and wait for the next day to pull them. You cut them, pull them right the same day, or else those trees will sit there overnight and just leak all kinds of sap out of them. It was a sticky mess. But we pulled some really monstrous trees out. We had a good time doing it. Check it out. So at number one, we have the Lumberjack Challenge and the YouTube community in general. So Midsummer fellow YouTubers, Bait Farm and Open Air Adventures and joined, invited us to participate in a loggers challenge and it was pretty awesome. And that's what keeps us posting every week is the amazing community of fans and peers. So with this video, we want to wrap up the year. We want to thank everybody for your subs and your views. Well, welcome back to Muck World Loggers. I'm uh, gonna cut a tree down in response to a fellow YouTuber. Eight Farms PA, Lumberjack Challenge. In response to this video, I'm gonna cut a tree down with a hatchet. Hyper tough, not sponsored. We didn't always have chainsaws. This is how they used to do it back in the olden days. 
Man, I tell you what, I like my chainsaw. Harvesting timber can be dated all the way back to the Stone Age, where they originally used tools made of flint and stone to cut wedges and chop down the trees, similar to what I'm doing right here. Around 5000 BC, Germanic tribes invented the very first saws we would recognize today nickel teeth and half moon shaped flints. It didn't take too long for them to start introducing iron into the design at around 750 BC. Around 1800, the first circular and band saws were being produced in England. But for a long time, even after the saw was invented and started to be used on a large scale, most people still used an axe because the saw was simply too expensive. It wasn't until the 1930s that somebody invented the proper chainsaws. Some of the first ones out the gate were Wolf of the USA, Westfelt of Sweden, and of course Steel from Germany, my favorite. And in the 1950s, they started development of personal one-man operated chainsaws that were still quite heavy at around four to five pounds heavier than a standard heavy-duty saw these days. So consider yourselves lucky, guys. Welcome to the future. Back to you, Tom. That's how you do that. We want to wrap up the year. Yeah,